Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Shiver and Shake. This is DJ Ben on WRGG 93.7. Let's have a good night tonight, okay? We got lots to look forward to. We got some awesome jams. And I have Jimmy Flemian of the Frogs coming on the show in 30 minutes. That's right. Jimmy Flemian of Alternative Rock Legends, the Frogs. He's going to be on the air with us tonight, giving us some insight into that legendary band. And of course, we're going to have a lot of fun together in the meantime, okay? All right. So, I hope that everyone's having a good evening today. (laughs) And I am so pleased to invite Jimmy Flemian to Shiver and Shake tonight. Jimmy, how are you doing this evening? Can you hear me, Jimmy? Yeah, I got you. Awesome. All right. So, Jimmy is best known as the lead singer and guitarist for the alternative rock band The Frogs. Formed in 1980 with his brother Dennis, The Frogs quickly developed a cult following of fans who fell in love with the band's home recordings, flamboyant sense of humor, and eccentric stage personality. Never afraid to shy away from controversy, albums such as It's Only Right and Natural and My Daughter the Broad proved to be essential to the alternative rock movement of the 1990s and have been gone on to become classics from that era. Jimmy, thank you for joining us on Shiver and Shake tonight. It is a pleasure to have you, sir. Thanks for having me, Bucky. (laughs) Absolutely. So I'm going to dive right in. I have a lot of questions that I'm looking forward to asking you tonight. I'm wondering what they're going to be. (laughs) So, when you and Dennis formed what would become the Frogs in 1980, alternative rock as we know it today was still a few years away. You started at a time when bands like Guns N' Roses, Van Halen, Bon Jovi were taking over the airways with very polished, production-heavy recordings. Were you guys initially drawn toward that so-called arena 80s rock and roll sound, or did you two always know that you were going to be chasing a completely different vibe? Well, we started out in 1980, right? So uh, there was, it was a whole different scene there with the, with the punk scene that was going on. And uh, things just changed along the way. We, uh, we, were, we played the punk clubs, and uh, we... we uh, I guess you start out with a punk attitude because you're you're in that world, and you uh, eventually we started writing our own songs. And you know, once we started writing our songs, we never know knew we had you know you can't plot it, you can't plan it out of the way it's going to go or what what kind of songs you're going to write or how uh, and, and you're not necessarily how the crowd's going to react because that's got nothing to do with it. You know, you just uh, keep doing your thing and. Uh, yeah, so I mean, obviously, when you know, when you when you start out, you have the dreams of the, uh, I don't know, the big rock stardom. But you, you know, it, it it's true. You know, you 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 listen to those people, and they become your heroes. You know, when I was sixteen, I started to started to take, you know, started to play in in nineteen seventy six, and so, you know, that was a whole different thing in the seventies. You know, when uh, I was into Springsteen, then you know, that's that was a that was what was cool then. And, uh, you know, he was part of the, what would be, you know, considered punk or rebellious back then at, at that time, you know? And, uh, oh, I don't know. We, you know, we played all different kinds of things. You know, we were, we were always inspired by people like the Beatles or Dennis was, you know, he, we grew up, he grew up with all the, un, what would become underground, you know, the cream and, Hendrix and you know all all that kind of thing and, and every, every, everything in between you know Tiny Tim and all those things influenced him you know all the you know all the '60s stuff that was uh, a bit uh, off you know maybe left field but was still part of the uh, mainstream uh, pop world and the and the radio back then so you know uh, it's funny you know you you start out with the it you know we 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 achieved that you know to you know, whatever to an extent. You know, we 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 practice our instruments, and you dream about that. Like, oh, you know, I, you know, you don't dream about. You know, you'll actually meet some of these people that you looked up to years ago. You know, I mean, you mean when you when you start practicing, and uh, yeah, and you know, uh, and once again, we never, you know, we 
uh, it's a long story, you know, but, uh, you know, we, uh, Dennis turned me on to music. So, you know, he'd been playing since 1967, the organ, you know, keyboard. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a long story, but, uh, you know, we, we kept, we kept doing our thing and it kept changing and evolving and, you know, you know, you know, the, uh, so, you know, it, it's funny, actually, we did achieve the, those things that you dream about, you know, you're playing, playing the stages and then big stages and whatever that might be. And, you know, experience some things along the way. And, uh, I don't know, you, you know, you, I, I guess, you know, you get humble after a while. Cause I mean, we, we, we did do a lot. It meant, it, and even though we didn't win, uh, you know, uh, hit on a big uh you know scale that people would have noticed us or, or paid attention but you know be through through our uh association with the with the with the top acts of uh our day and their day you know they uh uh gave us a bit of a uh boost and uh a higher profile and uh I don't know if that answers the questions. I kept going, going all, all all over the place, but you know, uh, I don't know. If you can elaborate on that if I if I even answer that question. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, most '80s rock bands, like I was saying, they had that very clean, polished sound that they were going for in the studio. It was fairly typical during that era of, of music. Um, you and Dennis, you opted to pursue more of a lo-fi sound which ultimately your fans fell in love with. Was that a conscious choice on your all's part to go against the norm of the time? Well, if you, if you know the, the actual story, we, we start, you know, uh, uh, in, in 1986, we, we began recording in the studio. So, I mean, we, we did the, what was known as the Pat session or the album that came out is called first. And that came out before the, I mean, it was recorded just a couple weeks before we went in the studio for the eponymous, the self-titled album, The Frogs, and that became like, uh, you know, that 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 was that was the you know that was always the goal. You know, we we did, you know Dennis liked you know, he liked the Sgt. Pepper's or whatever. You know, the the dream was to do. You know, he, he was into pop and he you know, understood pop production. And, you know, worship pop production and what. You know what it, what it uh, did to you. You know upon listening to it, and that was our uh, that was the goal. You know, so it, it kind of went off center because well, I don't know if you know the story. While we were recording that first album, then we, you know, we took out this reel to reel, rented it, and a cello, and then we started uh, making up. Just just so happens we started making up songs on the side, and you know like that. Like some of the songs that became, uh, I don't know what's, how many that is all together. I think it's like we did 26 songs in one day, which which included uh, Gwendolyn McRae and uh, Sad the Goat uh, Died Today and some other ones, Lifeguard of Love, that, you know, became songs that were actually released, you know. And uh, been a month since I had a man, the early version of that. And so it was just that kind of thing, you know, and then we... Uh, and you know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. We just like you know, we tr- uh, on that specific tape, we just traded off like you know, you sing one, I'll sing one, that kind of thing. And maybe if uh, uh, you know, and and that's how it occurred. And you know, you know, you know, and what happened? We we built up, you know, or there were all those made up songs of this uh, lo-fi stuff, and uh, it caught the ear of uh, Gerard Cosley at uh, Homestead Records through Jay Tiller, who passed on to the late Steve Albini, who passed it on to Gerard Cosley. And then the, uh, and then that was five month, five and a half months after we released It's Only Right Natural. And uh, so that became, then then we were, you know, we were, we were known for that, I guess, <laughs> known for that lo-fi sound because it, it just so happens that, you know, it wasn't uh, in the big studio like the first album was the self-titled, so it was a little little of both, and they both kind of came out at the same time, and you kind of had your pick, you know. And uh, I guess in a way, it's 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 you know, it's 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 kind of a different thing, right? So people, maybe some people reacted to that album or liked that album or vice versa. And then when we played live, we you know we we you know we electrified everything and electric electrified the audience with the, you know, with the, with, it was, it was a very, uh, 
very loud and heavy, could be heavy at times, you know, so, I mean, I'm sure you've, you've, you've probably come across some of the videos, which is uh, a, a little sampling of that, so that's kind of the answer to that one, possibly. Awesome. So <laughs> I want to get your take on this, um, and I've read before, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the source off the top of my head, that one of the reasons why alternative rock became such a monumental movement and exploded the way it, that it did is because it was a complete rejection of the 1980s, a rejection of the previous generation, the culture, suburbia, or again, listeners just fed up with mainstream 80s corporate rock sound. Uh, do you agree with that idea or theory at all? I don't know. You know, when we started out, like I said, you know, we, we were into the, you know, if we if we chose punk or or new wave at the time when we when when this all when that started and in our day you know we we chose the poppier end of that like elvis costello or even the pretenders and or any of those people that like that like that or you know we we respected the punk stuff or whatever we we liked that too but uh you know all of that stuff came before then so they just you know they're just kind of like a punk new wave and they just put it eventually put a name label on it and said, well, you can't call, you know, this, it's years later, we got to call it alternative. It's just an alternative of everything that's out. That's the answer to that one, you know, and, and as things went up, went by, you know, I don't know, you know, we, 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 uh, you know, we really fancied the, the music of the day like that. So we, you know, we didn't get, you know, we, we, we'd seen everybody in, and, you know, and everybody in between that you could imagine, at, you know, live. And so when it came time for whatever alternative or whatever that became, you know, we, you know, when and that we were uninterested in it, but we were, we were so busy doing our own thing and always recording and, you know, practicing that we didn't really pay much attention to it. You know, at the time, we, which you probably, you know, possibly you were alive then or maybe not, you know, with, with, uh, 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 MTV, you know, you watch 120 minutes and you see all that that kind of stuff, and that was kind of a a, a marker of what was going on at the time. And you'd you'd find, you know, you'd find a cool band here and there or a cool video, and and you'd like that kind of stuff, you know. It just you know, just you know, just depends, you know. But you know, somebody like XCC back in the day, though, you know, they started way back back when, so you know, they were still part of that MTV, you know. Eventually, you know, eventually they're lumped in with the alternative stuff anyway, you know. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Yeah. How do you how do you, how do you feel about that? I mean, how do you how do you uh, what what do you? I mean, I could see how it would be um, seen in the light of being a rebellion of the 1980s. I mean, whether it be you know Ronald Reagan's economics, the culture, whether it be just being fed up with mainstream corporate rock, um, just kids rebelling against parents. And, you know, that that distorted guitar sound just resonated with so many people. It just exploded. It's like it happened overnight. So, I don't yeah, know. It's just... kind of like that. A, a little of that, but then everybody got on the bandwagon, and, and that was kind of a thing or a sound to, uh, to uh, assimilate. I want to. I want to be like that, or I want to sound like that, or whatever. Yeah, just right place, right time. Yeah. yeah. But um, your music resonated with a lot of people, um, even with individuals like Kurt Cobain, Billy Corgan, Eddie Vedder. Um, you know, God bless Kurt. Obviously, he's no longer with us. But do you mm. still keep in touch with um, with these guys from your generation, like Eddie and Billy? Yeah, I haven't talked to him in, in years that way, you know, so it's been a while, you know, since, that, you know, it's been coming up on 12 years since I saw play the Eddie Vedder show with him and did that encore with him. So it's been 12 years with him. Uh, Billy, probably, I don't know, two, I don't even know, you know, whenever the last time we, we played or, or the, the funeral, I think. Yeah. So that's coming up on 12 years. So something like that, you know, it, it's uh, unless uh, I don't know. I don't know. We did the. Uh, Whatever it was the Jeepser song that was two twenty twelve that was after that so yeah I mean uh, I think Beck the last time I seen him was uh, in Japan with Sebastian Bach we just, we went to a record store and we just he just happened to be there so that's nineteen ninety eight I mean so it depends on the person you know so, and Sebastian himself I haven't seen since 
Summerfest 2001. So, you know, all these people, you know, I mean, they're, they're still, you know, they're around and, you know, we have a history. So it's just, I haven't run into them in a long time, you know, or, or been like on tour or been, you know, been some city where they're playing or whatever. You know. Yeah. I always thought it was interesting. I mean, it's well documented that like many of those di- guys didn't exactly get along very well, but you uh-huh. managed to forge a friendship with all of them. I mean, yeah. was it yeah. difficult being a mutual friend? I mean, did you ever find yourself getting caught in the middle, so to speak? No, I mean, there was none of that. Like, you know, uh, I think, I think I don't know. I think they're all doing their own things, or maybe deep down there's a mutual respect that's unspoken of, of by them. You know, I, I, I never witnessed any of that, you know, any digression or any of that kind of thing. That's yeah. good. Well, yeah. let's turn to the present. Um you just this month released a brand new live album, Medium Well. Yeah. Uh, rare okay. live material. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, let's see. Uh, yeah. Um, well, well, well. Before Dennis died, you know, we, he'd spoken of because he wanted. Uh, He's, you know, he's, I guess he was kind of fed up with the with the reaction or actual non-reaction that, you know, he, he had not come to the, uh, not to some conclusion, but he just said, you know, I'm a, I just want to put out a, uh, he wanted to put out the spiritual album, which, you know, I actually finished without his, you know, it would have turned out a whole different story or, or way it would have turned out with his uh, assistance and his, his uh, leadership role in that, but you know, he wanted to put up a spiritual album, and then he said he wanted to put out a live album, and after that, he said he's done. You know, so actually, you know, with that in mind, I I knew that uh, you know some of these some of the songs that are coming out, I knew that you know would probably be a part of that because some are you know like knockout performances or ones that he was like you know like uh, you know check marked like that's that's what I want to come out. So uh, with that with that in mind, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, I'll just uh, I, I'll I'll go through and it'll be I don't know how many songs is going to be, but uh, I, eventually I just wanted to I just thought the best idea is to do from each period and uh, you know give a little set not a little sampling but the, the best of what in my eyes or the best you know like versions or kind of cool versions or covers of over the years that uh, might. Uh, might tickle the listeners' ears, you know, what, you know, what might, what might, uh, and what, what would make me and me and Dennis proud, always with thinking with him in mind, what would be, uh, you know, something he'd be accepting of that way. So, so this is the fourth, uh, edition of that, right? There's, uh, there's rare, medium, rare, medium, medium, well, that's the fourth one so far. So I can't tell you what's up, but, but, you know, I, uh, you know, hopefully people are enjoying it because in between there, there's songs and there's like uh, "Possess You" or you know "Secrets of Love" songs like that that are, have never been released. So that you know, there's maybe demo versions of those, but there's uh, there you go. There's the uh, uh, live version of which is uh, a pretty good indication of how we would have done it in the studio. You know, and then there's you know, I guess in my eyes, cool covers or whatever you know, or unexpected or what people might. Uh, be turned on to or that's the that's the hope in my uh yeah my there's definitely a lot to dig into i mean there was some standout stuff on the track listing stuff like the beatles all sorts of stuff really um august 2019 you released a 30th anniversary edition of it's only right and natural Mm -hmm. which was completely remixed and remastered are there any plans to reissue and remaster any other original albums from your discography, like My Daughter the Broad, even if it's just digitally? You know what? You know what? I'd love to. But, uh, I mean, that was the idea with uh, with the uh, end of all music. We we had started the progress and just kind of uh, uh, disappeared in the air. You know, so that was the idea to do. I guess each one, but and and in my mind, you know, we. I, you know, I was flattered that we he wanted to do 30th anniversary, or, you know, just he wanted to do Right Natural, which is, a, I guess, you know, a smart move because people know it or people want to hear it probably, or if, if it's been out of print or, you know, then they can get a new copy. And, 
And so, you know, my, my thing would be like, well, that'd be really cool for, you know, Scotch Lollipop Sunday Surprise because it's never come out on, you know, all those that have never come out on vinyl. So, I mean, I'm I'm still hopeful or, or you know, we'll, we'll see. And I mean, I'm, I, you know, here's the, here's a broadcast. It'll get over the airwaves. You know, I'm, I'm not on the phone calling. Like, hey, you want to, you know, and so, you know, you know, that's so that's where the kind of stuff stands, you know. And I, and I know there's a demand for or, or you know, there's a you know, whatever you want to call it. There's people out there that would, you know, fans that would love to hear it. So, you know, I'm, I'm all up for it, you know, because that was it. That was the idea with the, uh, you know, damaged goods. You know, that was, you know, it's, it's send in reverse. I wanted to be a double album and uh, I wanted to come out. You know, I, I did. There was only, I spoke with, uh, uh, I'll say, but you know, there was a label that only wanted to put out one one disc, you know, one album. And I thought, well, you know, I can't do that. You know, it's it's got to be the whole story. And then I got the, all the pictures and all stories behind us, you know, and the and the story behind the album, and all that, yeah, wrapped up with the liner notes, which I wanted it to all be a big thing. And and hopefully that's you know that'll be the case someday. You know, I hope so. There's definitely an audience for it. I mean, someone on Facebook. I believe it was today. Um, uh-huh. They were asking me specifically about the Star Drive EP um, and yeah, if it would ever be, be released on vinyl again. Yeah, I mean that's a good idea. You know, I'm, of course, you know that. You know that when I saw that, I thought, oh, it's, it's beautiful. The guy I've been seeing it in so many years. You know, the green vinyl. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it come out. And you know, I think that would be a, a big uh, uh, seller. What if, you know, for sure? <laughs> yeah. Um, also, um, February 2020, you announced on Facebook that a Frogs documentary was in the works. Are you able to provide any updates on that particular project? Is that still happening? It's still in the works, and uh, I guess it's getting closer. And it's uh, I wouldn't know if it's this year, but I would guess because uh, we're already June. I mean, it could be. Like this year, I mean, uh, don't quote me, or it could be, you know, I would guess next year for sure, probably. Okay. And uh, how how that ends up, you know, uh, that's that's still a mystery to all of us. I don't know if it's going to be like in a, you know, on whatever that would be, uh, you know, documentary on Netflix or whatever, one of the streaming net uh, networks, or what are the other choices of film festival or or all all of the above. How it works out, you know, it'll it'll. It's uh, I I believe you know they put so much uh, energy into it at this point. It's not like it's going to drop or you know, drop uh, off. It, it it's going to drop on. It's going to come. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll come out soon. Yeah. I personally am really looking forward to that. And you know, when we're talking about reissuing past albums, I feel like that could really open up some doors once it's released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I've seen uh, you know, there's been a. There's been a two and a half minute clip, a five minute clip, and a forty minute clip that I've seen, and it's not necessarily what the picture, move, uh, movie will be like, or if any of that will, will occur in it. But you know, it's it's interesting because you know you learn things that you, know, I guess, other people's uh, perspective that you don't really, you know, you don't have conversations with people, or maybe this is their private thoughts, and when they're interviewed separately, that they you find out things like, well, that's interesting, you know, or different stories along the way that you didn't know actually occurred or happened. Yeah. So in recent years, you've played the occasional shows, um, mainly on the West Coast. Would you ever consider embarking on a full tour again? Oh, of course, yeah. That's, I mean, that's that's what I'd love to do, yeah. I, I, I love playing live, and, you know, I guess if you... You know, it's been coming up on 12 years since Dennis passed, and I guess, you know, if I added them all up, I don't know if it would come out to, not to 12 shows, but it hasn't been that many shows that way, you know. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I love playing live, and I love, you know, tra- traveling and seeing different cities and places I've never been, you know. And I, I mean, it's a whole different thing because it's, I mean, even, I, I, you know, I, I'm, when I did the do- uh, when we were working on the documentary, and I, I did Milwaukee and Chicago. Man, I've only done one interview, you know, since this is all you know happened. You know, like a year and a half ago. You know, when I did those shows. So, I mean, I like this kind of stuff because it's uh, you know it's it's kind of like uh, proof positive, right? Because I don't you know, I you know I'm I'm just in my house and I'm just like I don't know I don't you know I don't you know. 
you know, the history and, you know, your status or whatever that might be, or, you know, you know, your talent level or whatever it is. And you're just, you don't, you don't know what, uh, you don't interact with people. So you don't know what, what's, you know, what it's like, you know? So when you do actually get, you know, like get on stage, it's like one that's, you know, I mean, you know, it's the idea you'll live for it, but you know, you, it's something you're good at. So you like to, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a kick, you know? Yeah. It's gratifying. Yeah. But we yeah. need you on the East Coast. We need some yeah, you know Baltimore you know DC what? stuff. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, you know when when I did those uh, like what was it six shows with Evan Dando? Like that was twenty twenty four and I mean twenty twenty. But that's when everything shut down, and then after after that, you know, pr- prior to that, we you know, you know, we, I mean, there was we just got home, and there was you know that excitement. But that was the idea. That was the, the East Coast was the next, you know, and the, and where I don't know where you're at, but that would have been one of them, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm crossing my fingers for something yeah, in the near too. future. Yeah. yeah. Um, your you your genuine love for your brother in the band is very apparent. I mean, anyone can see that who's even remotely familiar with the band. Um, I think yeah. that brotherly love and bond and sense of family is honestly part of the appeal, at least for me. Um, yeah. All that to say. What do you want the legacy of your band to be? What do you want people to remember in the years ahead? Oh boy, you know, I, I don't really think about that question, but it's a, it's an interesting question, and I appreciate it. Uh, uh, you know, you could see it's a, it's always one of you know you, you, uh, some some answer like you you were special or you were different or you know you. I mean, the, the the main thing is that uh, I don't know. We we just there, there's a joy in uh, you know, like you know, you have all that history or the family, you know, the family blood and all that when you when you're on the stage and and uh, it's it's quite a different thing than you know just some other band member, you know. So whatever, you know, you got you know, it's it's, it's kind of like a well, I guess a sibling rivalry, and you got the I'm gonna. I'm going to show you or, you know, you, you better be good, you know, cause you know, we, 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 you know, we're, you know, our reputations online and all that, you know, when you're on stage and you want to give your best and all that. And I guess, you know, through it all, you know, I, it, you know, uh, I'm going to give my answer. <laughs> Let's see, you know, that, that we were, we were entertainers and, you know, through it all, through all, throughout our, all our influences, there was still, you know, something that we uh, had that was special or different or something that we gave to the world. And, and, uh, and that we're, you know, I think we're underrated songwriters that, that gets lost and lost in it all or people that know, know, you know, and uh, also, you know, we, 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 uh, you know, we, we, but, I don't know. We we played to our best abilities, and we were, uh, you know, we tried to entertain, right? And we, and I think we did it differently, just because of the course of uh, the way the career charted, and the and through our own decisions, and uh, and our own opinions and attitude, and uh, I don't know. At the end of the day, you're just grateful because you know. Because when the, the songs and the and the the trajectory of everything, you know, you never could have planned it, and you, and of course you never could have planned like why is this song coming out of me, or why did why am I able to write this, you know, or you know, you know. So you are blessed that way, and you're also thankful, you know. Yeah. So that's part of the answer. <laughs> I yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I understand yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I want to be respectful of your time. I have one more yeah, question yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask if you're working on anything new and if you've ever considered recording a solo album of entirely new material. Yeah, of course, you know, the, like, uh, like you've heard stuff, you know, from... I've been writing songs since 1977, so... I mean, I'm still writing them. I haven't. I'm not writing them in the dosage that I used to. Like in 1992, I wrote, uh, I think it's a uh, 132 songs or something like that. So there was, it was like I was always writing and writing and writing. 
and so there's there's plenty of songs and then there's even uh uh some stuff in uh two studios i went to in austin texas that i recorded some stuff and not like a full-length album and and no uh like extensive over overdubs anything like that and of course it would be uh you know quite uh uh I'm mean, uh, magnificent to go in and just start from scratch. You know, I did that uh, Christmas minus Mama thing. You know, that was I guess some in, some kind of indication, but you know, and that was kind of a a quick thing or one day or you know a few, few hours. So, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I, you know, I, I just love doing it when I'm in there, or it just brings me uh, you know joy. So. Uh, so yes, I would like to do that, and yes, I would like to, uh, you know. And then you go back and you think, okay, which which songs would I choose? And of course, you know, there's so many, and and of course, you know, would you would the world like to hear every one of those other songs? I mean, at 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 some point, I I I, I I'm okay with them hear, hearing it. And I'm not embarrassed by any of them, and they all they all, uh, uh, you know. They all serve the time, and they all have some kind of a story that's different than the others. And uh, and yes, I'd like to go <laughs> to release something. You know, I'd, I'd love to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. And I, you know, and and I see that happening someday soon. Yeah. Good. Well, I personally am looking forward to that. I hope to see the documentary soon, a new album, yeah. a tour, <laughs> particularly yeah. the East Coast. So yeah, yeah. I will. Um, I will keep my fingers crossed for all of those things. But Jimmy, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I love your music. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. I want you to know that um, there is an audience and we love you and we really appreciate everything you've done past, present and future. Oh, that's, I, I'm, I'm flattered. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Jimmy, thank you again. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Okay. You too. All right. Bye Bucky. Take care. Right. Take care. All right. That was Jimmy Flemian of the Frogs, everybody. If you've never heard the Frogs, I encourage you to check them out. Um, as Jimmy indicated, there is a documentary in the works that could be coming out this year uh, or next year. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but they are a very charismatic band. And um, if you have a good sense of humor... Uh, you should definitely check them out because they have some funny material, but they also have some serious stuff too. Uh, it's a good mix and a good balance, um, but definitely a band that is rich in history. Again, awesome band. Um, they had a huge impact on 1990s alternative rock and roll. Again, their legacy cannot be understated. Really looking forward to that documentary. I think you all will enjoy it just as much as I am going to. Um, but, um, thank you again, Jimmy, for tuning in. Um, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for doing your thing. <laughs>